sub for that. I don't have it with me, but if you guys want to make that change, that would be um, acceptable. Do you, what was that? On line number 16, where it says validation decal, uh, that should say revalidation decal. And you have a sub? I do have, we do have a sub, yes, right? It's in the file. It's in the file. Okay, yeah. okay. A minute, okay. Very good. Uh, what's a will committee? Do I have a, a motion for? Question. Yes. Question. Um, on this, uh, the tag that goes around, yes. some of them has got little things in the corner that'll block the two, uh, like your your little sticker. Correct. And, and you know, some of them's just square and you can see and everything's fine, but then some of them have like little designs. I don't Harley Davidson's the one that I think yeah, of, yeah. Uh, that'll have that. Do we not need to kind of put in there that nothing can be blocked as far as the stickers? I know you got the numbers and everything on there, it, but that's where the revalidation decal is on there. Okay. So line sixteen said so we added that. Okay. I'm so good. they have to be able to read that. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Number six, you have a question? Question no, just at proper time I like to make a motion. Uh, is there further questions for the author? All right. Representative? Uh, do pass with uh, as a substitute. Is that correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? Or as amended? As amended. Let, get, let's let's have a motion. Let's have a motion, and then during discussion, we'll we'll take that. Do I have a motion? Second. Uh, further discussion. Now would be the time. Pass as amended. Uh, line 16 the amendment would be on line 16, 16. adding revalidation exactly taking out Ta validation. correct taking out validation the word validation and replacing it with revalidation is that clear as mud <laughs> do I have a motion on the amendment second, second. all in favor Aye. Aye. And now we are left with the original question, which would be correct wording is passed by committee substitute. As, as amended, I apologize. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Very good, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we are adjourned for this meeting, heading straight into full meeting. Thank you. Thank you. This time we're going to ha hear House Bill uh, 307 a as amended, and we've got the copies being made as, as we speak. Let me... On the way. Good morning, colleagues. I got to tell you something. This has been one of the most difficult things I've had to deal with. Uh, let me give you all a little bit of background. For almost the 30 years that I've been here, we've been putting patches and band aids on this non consensual tow issue. And every time we think we've done something, then it just really complicates the system. At the heart of this, is it non-consensual tow? The tow truck operators around the state, and especially in the metro areas, have had a difficult time getting rid of these vehicles that law enforcement, for the biggest part, has, has called them to uh, pick up. 
And what happens in this is that uh, the tow truck operators, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. The towing operations in this state, they're basically certified to do that type of operation by the Department of Public Safety. So whenever, if they're licensed to do that type of work, whenever they get a call from public safety to pick up a vehicle, if they don't pick it up, they probably won't stay in business very long. So once they pick up a vehicle and they take it to, the, to their yards, which is a secure yard, then they have to hold that vehicle. Now you would think in a lot of cases that the owners of that vehicle would, would respond, they'd come pick up the vehicle. Well, in a lot of cases they don't, either because they don't know about it, which is hard for me to believe, or because they just don't have the money, or these vehicles are just basically junk vehicles, either involved in wrecks or abandoned on the uh, roads and such as that. The gist of what's happened is that a lot of these companies, they wind up sitting on these vehicles. Nobody will come pick them up. Nobody will settle with them for the towing charges and the, and the storage charges. So if you can imagine it uh, mostly in the metro area, where the problem is, where land is of a value, they fill up these lots to the point that they just can't even, don't even have room to even put any more of these vehicles. And then let's get to the other problem. Now, over the years, what we've done uh, in the state is we've set up a system, and because of the state constitution, it requires that these folks have due process under the constitution. You can't do non-judicial uh, foreclosure on an abandoned vehicle like they do in other states. So that's made this whole problem <coughs> unique. You've got 159 different magistrates around the state, and quite honestly, a lot of them treat things a lot differently when it comes to uh, legal proceedings and the filings to notify and to get uh, to, for these folks to get a judgment so that they can actually sell the junks which in 90% of the time, these things br don't bring what the uh, towing fees and what the storage <laughs> fees are. So then we get into the gist of this, and that's the filing and, and the notification process so that we've made this constitutional. Now, I want to tell you, this lady right here, Jenna Doley, she deserves all the praise in the world for walking through this. This has been the most miserable process, <laughs> quite frankly, between dealing with the private business sector that has taken it on the chin on all these vehicles and how to deal with the magistrates and the judiciary in this process. You can go from one end of the state to the other and you've got different magistrates that have different interpretations of this. So at that, I'm gonna make an attempt to walk through this this process, and I may have to call on Jenna, or I may have to call on my personal attorney, Les Snyder, that I actually had to bring in to help me with this so that he could navigate all of this situation with the legal proceedings. That being the background, you're a tow truck uh, towing operation, and you've been notified to pick up a vehicle. They pick the vehicle up. That tour has 15, up to 15 days to send out a certified letter to the last owner of record, or to the owner of record or lien holder. And they get this either through the revenue department or through a designee, one of these third party companies that the revenue uh, authorizes to dispense that, uh, that notification or that information on the vehicle based on the VIN number. Once they pick that up and they send that notification out, then they have, then the person that, or the entity that they send that out to, they have up to 10 days. If they don't return that card of, of accepting notice that they've been served notice, if they don't, they've got 10 days and then they can publish. Then they'll have to publish in two of the three ways. One is they can post it in the courthouse, the old fashioned way of putting it on the bulletin board in the courthouse, serving notice that this vehicle has now been impounded and you need to respond. They can either do it the second way, through, a, through the legal county legal organ or through a general newspaper within that area. So then that's the second way that they have served notice to that person. <laughs> If the green card hasn't been returned, 
or let, let me back up. If it has been returned, that they've received notice, then that owner has got 10 days, excuse me, 15 days to either settle up with that operator or not. And at that point, regardless the, the, um, at the 15 days, then the towing operator, then they can file with the magistrate court. Now, back several years ago, we had actually lowered the proceedings because a lot of these derelicts in the junk wasn't even bringing what it was worth to even file in all the storage and the towing fees and all. So over the period of time, at some point in history, and I couldn't tell you when, that we had lowered the filing fee to $10. Well, quite frankly, I think that's probably what put it in the drag mode with a lot of the magistrate courts, especially in the more metro areas. So we're, we are recommending that we go back to raise that filing fee to $25. And as I get to the end of this process, I'll tell you why on that. So then they'll do the filing. And upon the filing in the court proceedings, then that person has got 15 days. If they don't respond, then they send out a second certified, they file, and then they send out a copy of the filing to the same people, the owner of the record, or the lien holder, and to let them know that this is what we have filed to the magistrate's court. Then they have, let's see, 10 to let's see, 15 days, they've got 10 to 25 days. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes wrong. This looks like chicken scratching, folks. This is, <laughs> a, this is the most complicated, that's the reason I don't like to go to judiciary. But uh, if the owner responds, then that goes through the court proceedings. If, it do, if they don't, and after that period of time, then they have to notify again. At that point in the filing, it goes through court, and then it's that whole lengthy process. But bottom line is, this through this method, that we're giving proper notice, not just once, but twice, to be sure. Then you get to the point, if, the, if it goes in front of the magistrate, uh, then if there has been no response, then the judge can rule. If they rule in favor of the towing operator, then they can then order for the abandonment of it, and then it starts a process that they can send, uh, hold an auction. Uh, and at that auction, if this junk is auctioned off, if there's any overages to it, then that goes to the, once the tow operator gets their, their expenses out of that, if there's more than is, uh, if the auction has been brought in, then it goes to the State uh, Department of Revenue Unclaimed Assets <coughs> Division so that that owner, at that point, can come and claim any overages. The current process is it's split. At an auction, it's split between, any overages is split between the towing operator, the courts, and the law enforcement. Thanks to a conversation with one of the uh, magistrates, uh, when we first and originally we had talked about the towing operators being able to hold, keep all of the overages, then the court said we can't do that because they're not <coughs> entitled to it. And then we realized, well, if the, if the towing operator that had the expenses wasn't entitled to it, well, neither were the courts or the, or the law enforcement. So what we've done in this, we've set up a system so that any overages at that auction goes to the unclaimed uh, property division at Revenue, and the owner has then got up to six months to claim the overage. If they don't claim the overage in six months, then it goes to the next, uh, which would be the towing operator, and they've got up to a year, from six months and a, uh, six months and a day to a year for them to, to lay claim to that money. If not, then the towing operator would be the next in line and then they could lay claim to any overages. That's as simple as I can say it. And if there's any technical questions, I'm gonna call on uh, Jenna or I'm gonna call on Les to see if they can help explain it any better. Okay, we're, we're I just got a text. Uh, I'm getting 25 copies made of the bill. They're on copy number 20 right now. So they'd be just, just a minute. I know there's uh, two or three people had, had come up last week and reserved Right on, on, on comment on, on, on the final legislation to lay work with uh, with the author and, and the uh, ledge council over the weekend, uh, or any of those here would like to uh, 
address the concerns? stay up here with my cousin. Uh, <laughs> Rusty Sewell and I represent the magistrate judges. And yeah, we, Les and I talked yesterday. We got this bill last night. Les and I are going to continue to talk. I have, we don't have a problem with y'all moving along. Most, the concerns that we have are things that make it work. There's some things in there that just don't make it work efficiently to, to do that. And We'll work on those. I've got to kind of renumber them, and Les and I are going to probably get together after this and go through the system as usual. Okay. So, so you're, you're good with moving everything forward and you'll work, work it? Yes, sir. And it through the rest of the process. Otherwise, he'll yell at me. So, uh, <laughs> no. Do we have any <laughs> questions? We, we, we'll, we've got a few questions for the author. Number six. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Powell, I just want to make sure I understand uh, the intent of this bill is to sort of keep these these record operators who have to pick these who are called to pick them up by law enforcement or whomever to tow these vehicles back to their yard they're sitting there right now they're just sitting there and the owners are not coming to reclaim them so basically they're stuck with this on their they're property stuck. Okay. And because of the nature of these vehicles being registered as property with VIN numbers and registered in the Department of Revenue, you can't do non-judicial disposal of those vehicles like they do in surrounding states because our Constitution requires that before there's taking of any type of property, whether it's junk or otherwise, then there's got to be judicial proceedings. Okay. And did I hear you say that once they get these vehicles on their lot, they... The, the the record owner, I mean, yeah, I guess the owner of that lot, is then required to notify the owner of the vehicle correct. to say that I have your thing and it's it's here. That's correct. Okay. Or the lien holder. Or the lien. the last one of record, the owner of record or the lien holder. Okay. And again, on the, on that point alone, I I would think that the some law enforcement would be required to do that, not the actual person who, who's doing the job that, I mean, to me, I see the record on, I mean, operators just, they're doing their job. They've been told to come pick this up. Exactly. They have a contract to pick them up. But as far as notifying the owner or the VIN, who has the VIN number, I, I would think that would be more on, for lack of better words, law enforcement or government side to do that. But neither here nor there. So. It stays there for too long. Now we can take it to auction. After you've gone through the legal prescribed all that, legal all that process, notification right. and due process, basically. And if sold at auction, if sold at auction, the record, the uh, record operators, they get whatever they whatever they had filed in court right for their expenses of towing storage and legal fees and the such that they've gone through the certified cost of certified letter or the cost of publication then they can receive that through the filings and then the rest go would go if there's anything overage would go back to the owner if there's any overage say for example a towing fees storage fees all the processing fees or certified letters and mm -hmm. filing fees and all. Say on a particular vehicle that's been abandoned, wrecked, abandoned, or otherwise, and they've been ordered to pick that up by law enforcement. Say, and let's throw a ballpark figure that there's $600 involved in cost of that vehicle. Once they've gotten an order from the court of an abandoned vehicle, there's been proper notification to the owner of the lien holder, then it can be sold, and they have to have an auction. And they'll have an auction. And then, of course, auction fees are then added to that. And say that, uh, say that operator had five, say it's $500, $600 in it, then you got the auction fees. Well, once that vehicle's auctioned off, if, say, there's $750, mm -hmm. and say that, uh, that vehicle at auction may bring for junk purposes or parts values or whatever, and say that the vehicle is uh, sold for, say, $1,200. Mm -hmm. 
well, you've got three or four hundred dollars difference. That three or four hundred dollars would then be deposited and sent to the Department of Revenue Unclaimed Properties Division. At that time, that owner of record who has been notified numerous times, they can, they've got up to six months and they can go claim the overage. If they don't claim the overage at six months and a day, then it could be claimed by the towing operator. Okay. If the towing operators, if it's just so insignificant of amount that it's not worth their time, then at the period it can go up to a year, and at the end of that 12 months, then it becomes a property of the state. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. I told you, this is not a simple process. Number 15. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and that last point is, and I think we kind of briefly talked about it, what was the thought process? Why not, after that six months, automatically send that money back to the tow operator or to the business rather than making them file for it and going through all that after all they've been through? I just want, why wouldn't well, we just send that money back? To the operator? Yeah. To the towing operator? Right. You know, that doesn't bother me to do that, except I know the legislative process. There were some concerns expressed at the meeting that I couldn't be here from some of the members. Yeah. and they wanted to do it this way, it works out the same way because if that owner of record has not laid claim in the first six months, then in six months in a day, that operator, if it's worthwhile to them, they can claim it. They'd be next in line. I was just trying to cut out a step they'd have to do. Right. I mean. any, any more questions? I think everybody should have a copy of the bill, and you pretty much went over all the changes uh, in your summary. It's hot, hot, hot off the off press. The so uh, anyway, we're, we're working on LC 392162S, and that's, that's the sub that, that you, you just explained, the, the changes right. that was made from our, our uh, previous meeting. I will tell you that hopefully this committee will pass this bill forward uh, if we can move it out of rules and if we can move it out of the House. This thing is going to be a work in progress. Uh, as is usual, my fate with dealing with certain motor vehicle issues, we've had other entities that have, have came and gotten involved in this. The insurance companies have wanted to put some language in there. The, uh, you know, you name them. Anybody that's got a concern, they want a piece of this action. I haven't asked them to do it, and I've said it's been my lot in life in motor vehicle issues that somehow it's like, Nats drawing on something. So, you know, that's how it is. But you'll see these folks that'll be coming to the table, I'm sure, over in uh, over in the Senate at probably at some point, or maybe the Rules Committee. But as we move forward in this process, as you had heard from uh, Mr. Sewell, the magistrates, they've got some concerns. And I certainly want to work with the magistrates. But at the end of the day, this is about streamlining a process for the businesses in this state that are being, being ordered by law enforcement. And that's what got me involved over the years because this is, in fact, a public safety issue. Because at some point, when you've got these lots and they're uh, taking orders from law enforcement to pick up vehicles, if they don't start getting rid of them, at some point, they're going to be scratching their head and say, well, maybe we don't need to be in this, and then we start having a situation. Right. I, I see no further uh, questions. At the proper time, I would entertain a motion. So move we pass substitute to House Bill 307. Second. Right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and thank you, committee members. And I'd certainly like to have some volunteers that would like to help navigate this <laughs> bill. All right, at this time, we're going to adjourn the full committee. And, uh, well, I'm sorry, we, we've got, uh, do we? One, is 174? <laughs> full committee, we, we will. We will uh, hear uh, 174 since we've had our second hearing. Uh, uh, and and ev everybody was here to, uh, to hear the bill. Is there any questions for the, for the author? At the prop proper time, we have a motion. No do we have a second? second? Got a motion, a second. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 
Aye. All opposed? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Bill. Chairman. Thank you, Committee. All right. At this time, we will adjourn the full committee and go back into the sub to hear uh, another bill. Um, Chairman Matt, dollar bill 342. Good morning again. A little bit of musical chairs. Chairman Dollar, I see you have some distinguished co-signers on this bill. Uh, would you tell us a little bit about it? I don't know how that happened, Chairman. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's a little simple bill. Um, as the members can see, it's one pager, and, and all it simply does is for any um, any instance where the vehicle can be can can be sighted, we're talking about tail lights, hail, uh, head, headlamp being out, uh, issues with the registration, um, uh, you know, registration sticker. Uh, David Wilkinson's uh, bill, you know, with the license plate tag. I mean, uh, the license plate frame. Anything that's that that involves a vehicle um, that an officer. Uh, may issue the ticket if the person's not driving the car. For instance, say, uh, uh, Dale, you're driving your brother's car, and uh, it, it has a tail light out. You get pulled over, your brother's in the car. If, if they can prove that that's their car, the officer may issue your brother the ticket. Um, under current law, they have to issue it to the driver. Uh, the idea really behind this is that, you know, uh, with Uber, Lyft, and you know a number of services, there there are you know somebody that can drive your car home for you. You know you call them up, they come and pick you up, and you know they drive your home. That you wake up, your car's there, it's great. Um, but if you know somebody with that service gets pulled over and there's a you know a ve an issue with the vehicle, certainly not their fault. Uh, you know they can write the other person the ticket. And that's it. Do we have questions for the author? Any questions? 8.30. Seeing no questions, is, uh, what is the will of the committee? Move back. I make a motion to move back. So Second. Second? Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Thursday. I'll be there. Thank you. Very good. Meeting adjourned. It's a quick bill.